Support for this podcast comes from Learning Alliance. What would it mean to your business to have a $3 million sales producer in your HVAC or roofing business? How about an electrician or plumber who generates $600,000 or more in revenue? Those numbers would change your business. We see them all the time. How? It happens when Success Group International members send their people to Learning Alliance training. Learning Alliance offers high-impact, in-person, and virtual communication and sales training geared toward generating results while turning customers into raving fans. SGI members can learn more about Learning Alliance and its offerings by visiting its new training portal on SGI's internal website, the SGI Hub. Learning Alliance is an exclusive benefit to SGI members Non-members can learn more by calling 866-344-0789. I get a lot of people who are shocked to see a female salesperson in the HVAC industry. Okay. Interesting. So I get right. asked that a lot and I'll let them know. I just absolutely love who I work for. It's, mm-hmm. we are, we are a business of taking care of people. We just so happen to do HVAC. I mean, HVAC is, it's either love it or you hate it. You either know a lot about it or you don't know anything about it. Um, I love my company. And so learning HVAC was something that I was absolutely willing to do, put in the training for, because I'm passionate about my company. And people love that. I mean, they're like, we can tell how good your company is because of how highly you talk about it. Yeah. And that really, I could talk about Diamond all day and how much it's changed my life. And we're just a big family and I love it. Welcome to The Successful Contractor, powered by Success Group International, a show for residential contractors about residential contractors. We chronicle business journeys, share insights, and celebrate successes in this wonderful industry. I'm your host, Bob Houchin. Hello there, SGI family and other contractor friends. I'm so thankful you're here. As a reminder, all episodes of The Successful Contractor Show can be found on YouTube as well as your podcast player of choice. So please, choose the medium that works best for you. Um, I'm very excited to bring to you another episode in our Crown Champion series. Um, A Crown Champion is anyone who sells over $1.5 million in residential HVAC equipment, by the way. So, uh, And that's what today's guest did. Uh, Jamie Faria is a comfort advisor for Diamond Heating and Cooling in Garden City, Idaho, who sold over $1.57 million in her very first year in residential HVAC uh, equipment sales. And uh, she did that actually after coming from the office and being a CCR. So good story there. But uh, Jamie just has a great story, period. Uh, One that you could say is almost made for the movies. Um, She's overcome so much in her life. Um, a family, not the best family situation, had to be raised in foster care, and that wasn't a great situation. Had That kind of led to some uh, addiction issues and, and some prison time. But for the last eight years, she's been clean and sober, living a great life. She's a great mother to four little ones, um, and now she's enjoying great professional success along with her personal success. So Jamie is someone that you cheer extra loud for, if you ask me, and I'm very proud that she's part of our SGI family. So just as uh, with our other crown champion interviews, Jamie will share her story with us, and then she'll share how she's so successful selling in the home, uh, giving giving us uh, some insight into her selling system. So I hope you enjoy this interview and take away a nugget or two. Well, Jamie, thank you so very much for joining me on the show today. Uh, Just for everyone that's, that's watching, that's listening, can you please share your name, your company name, and where you're located? My name is Jamie Faria. I'm with Diamond Heating and Cooling in Garden City, Idaho. Very good, very good. And I'm talking to you for a very special reason. You had a fantastic 2020. Um, Let's see, you were, by airtime standards, a crown champion. Maybe share with everyone uh, what your your total sales numbers were uh, last year, if you can remember loosely. I don't remember the exact number, (laughs) um, but it was, I believe it was 1.583. Very Somewhere good. around there. That's fantastic. And let you be added, it was your first year ever in uh, in HVAC sales, correct? Correct. Yes. <laughs> That's amazing. Do you remember what your what your average ticket and closing percentage were? Or I, I'm getting the weeds a little bit. No, that's all right. Um, so my average ticket was seventy three hundred. Um, my closing percentage was fifty fifty one percent, somewhere in between right. there. 
So that's incredible. Yeah, that's incredible. Like I said, for for first year and first year in sales too, because you had never been in sales before, right? Um, I did a I did like a little bit of car sales, um, okay. but that is a completely different industry, completely <laughs> sure. different type of se selling. So right. Um, right. But this was my first year in HVAC sales and with Diamond. That's or with any HVAC company. Right. Very good. Very good. Well, I want to get into, into your sales process and what you do day to day and, and how you're so successful. But before we do that, um, I always love learning people's stories. I think there's as much to be learned from people's backgrounds and what they've overcame uh, as there is learning about what you do day to day. So let's get into, um, let's work backwards a little bit. Now, like you mentioned, this was your first year in sales with, with Diamond, but it was not your first job with Diamond. What, what were you hired to do initially? I was a CCR, so I worked in the office, um, booking, scheduling calls, um, club memberships, stuff like that. That's very good. And and then did you become a dispatcher or were you always a CCR before you got transitioned to sales? I was just a CCR. I okay, didn't do very dispatching. Good. Very good. All right. Now, what were you doing before a C becoming a CCR at Dime? And by the way, how long ago was that? Uh, this year in... June, I will have been with Diamond for four years. For four years, for four years. Okay. And Leah, let's talk yeah. about what, what were you doing previously? You mentioned you did some car sales. What, what other kind of uh, work backgrounds do you have? Uh, for people that, that are like, well, how do I find a crown champion? What kind of backgrounds do they have? I always think that's that's beneficial for people to hear. Well, my, my background with previous work history is pretty basic. Um, I've done just a lot of customer service. Um, I did... Uh, cashier at Macy's. Um, I've done some fast food jobs, and then I worked for a car company here in Idaho, and I was there for about eight months and sold cars. Okay. Now, how did you hear about the opportunity at, at Diamond? Was it just a, a job ad on, on a site? They actually had a big banner hanging on the side of the building that said now hiring and I wanted out of car sales bad. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, my husband is a plumber and oh. he always talked to me about finding a trade, get with a trade company. So I saw the banner and from the time I walked into the front office, I just knew that this was my home. Everybody was so welcoming. The culture was so amazing. Um, yeah. I went through a three step interview process and right. um, I bugged Sue Ellen until she called me back and gave me the job. <laughs> Is that right? You just kept calling her? Yeah. That's yep. incredible. That's incredible. Um, but, and, and I know from what I've heard a little bit, you've got a, a, an incredible story of, of overcoming some really, some incredible difficulties. You had some addiction issues, right? Before, well before this, it sounds like that you had, had overcome, correct? Correct. Yeah. What, and, so, and, and um, go ahead, please. Um, do you just you just want a little like background history of yeah i mean i, I mean for people to overcome that is just tremendous because so many people do struggle with it these days and now it's a lot more open and not stigmatized but i just think it, it just speaks to your character and how you were able to overcome that and and it probably it, it speaks that why you're able to do so well in sales so quickly yeah so um just a uh, background history um i when I was a lot younger, uh, I, my parents lost um, parental rights and uh, I was in foster care. Okay. Um, for most of my childhood and teen years, I aged out of foster care. Mm. Um, but while I was in the foster care program, I, I did pick up an addiction and um, I, I was an addict for quite a few years. Um, mm. I had got a charge and went to prison i did a little bit of time in prison oh goodness yeah um yeah and i i have i became a mother i have four mm -hmm. children um and those little humans changed my life um, i went through a treatment program i completed all my requirements for the charge that i had got and um i've i've been clean for september will be eight years Good and um, so the I it's been a it's been a heck of a ride, but um, yeah, I just I do want to share my story because I mean it doesn't matter where you're coming from, it matters where you're going. 
Um, totally agree. I had a pretty rough childhood, pretty rough yeah. teen years, even as a as an early adult, going through all of that, overcoming my addiction, and um, I mean, I don't, I wouldn't change anything. I don't regret it because it has made me who I am today, and I just have this drive to not be a product of my my history my parents were addicts and I just have generations of that in my family and sure. I'm the one who's going to break the chain and you have I mean that's incredible it's very difficult to do that because the, the research shows if, if you have that in your history and your family history it's very difficult so it's it's you know kudos to you incredible story I I'm sorry to bring it up but I think it it, it, it honors you that's even more than what you've done so so thank you for sharing that um so Absolutely. after you got got straightened out and you started just kind of working your way up right and you started taking jobs and, and you finally get to diamond and uh now i had the pleasure well of, of interviewing your your general manager when he was a salesperson robert who's just a neat neat guy and uh yeah obviously i had the benefit of meeting you at our gala not too long ago and and he was singing your praises and, and like i said i just love robert to death but he was the one that that noticed something about you uh, at the call center that said, I think, uh, I think Jamie can sell. Can, can you maybe share that story about how that transition happened, how he came to you? Wh what were your thoughts? Yeah, I was, I was very excited. I mean, I, I love the company, no matter what position I'm in. I absolutely love diamond heating and cooling. Mm -hmm. And Robert really saw the passion that I have for the company and mm -hmm. for people. Um, mm -hmm. I exceeded really well on the phone with customers. I mean, I would have a two minute phone call. I would have a 35, 45 minute phone call, oh, wow. just listening <laughs> to the customer. And, um, a lot of times CCRs don't really get, um, you know, reviews or stuff like that. I mean, unless sure. you really made an impression with that customer on the phone right? and Robert noticed those things, um, mm -hmm. with me and thought that I would do do well meeting customers face to face. Yeah, that's incredible. Talk about uh, what was your training process like, your onboarding process. Uh, obviously, you had the car sales background, um, which is diff very, very difficult. But uh, but yeah. this is a little different animal. You know, you have to you have to learn some of the technical stuff. So what what was your onboarding like? So I did uh, two and a half months of uh, training with Robert. Um, okay. So he, I mean, he's a great teacher. And I just listened. I, I, I mean, he was our top sales guy at our company for so many years. Yeah. And I just, he would walk me through the process of what he did. I, I watched, I listened, and I picked up the exact same steps. And um, I just went with what he taught me, and it's made me very successful like it did him. Very good. At what point did he allow you to kind of, I know I'm sure at first you're just watching him and, and seeing how he talks to homeowners mm -hmm. in the home. How long did it take for you to, to kind of flip roles where he observed you um, and, and you took the lead? Did that, did that take really, was it just a, a couple of months and then the last two weeks you were doing that on your own and he was watching you or, or did it happen sooner and he really just watched you and coached you up for a longer time? So it was about a month that I shadowed him and watched how everything was going. And then uh -huh. it flipped. Um, we still stayed together, training together, um, but I took the lead. Okay. So um, we did that for about a month. And then um, the first couple of weeks I went out on my own, but I was pretty much on the phone with Robert the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. He walked hey. me through all of it. That's great. That's great. Now, what is, uh, for, for people that, that you know, the question always comes up with SGI. Well, what do I do for training? What kind of schedule should I have for training with salespeople? What What do you guys do at, at Diamond on a week-to-week -week basis, uh, training-wise? Um, so we meet together every single morning. Um, mm -hmm. We pick up training for our um, indoor air quality products. Our manufacturer, where we get our equipment from, comes in and does training with us. Mm -hmm. um, we have a weekly sales meeting where we get together and go over new products or new changes, stuff like that. And then we also have a training facility here at our office out in the warehouse with um, equipment that is all different kinds of equipment that's hooked up, that's working, that you can go out and get hands on. That's great. That's great. So did you, have, as a salesperson, did they want you to get a lot of hands on stuff so you at least had a, an idea of what you were, you were selling? 
Um, not, not really on the technical side of okay. things, like what a, what a service tech would do, but with right. the installers going out there with the installers and going over, because they see things completely different than we do. Um, right. they see, right. you know, how it's going to go into place, what's going to fit. So, um, we do, we do that. And then we are asked to go out to jobs that we sell and go visit the install as it's happening. Oh, great. Okay. Just to make sure everything's okay, the homeowner's happy, keeping keeping the good the good vibes going. Okay, good stuff. Very yeah. good. All right, so I want to let's talk about some nitty gritty stuff. How how you do uh, what you do on a daily basis. So, um, okay, you get dispatched on a, on a sales appointment. Uh, you're driving along. How do you um, how do you keep yourself in the right mental mind frame to to do really well on that call? For example, maybe you didn't sell the appointment before, or you know you got You've got four kids. I mean, I you know I have two, and I can't barely handle that. So you've got 80, <laughs> 80 <It's> practices, <laughs> and games, and 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 all sorts of stuff that they're involved with. It's there's a lot of stuff that can can jumble your mind. So how do you tune all that out and get ready for that that next appointment? Um, you know, I I just I have this switch, and and Robert noticed it and pointed it out. You know, even if I have stuff going on in my personal life with the kids mm -hmm. or stuff like that. Um, I do a lot of research before I go out to the job. I'll check to see if they're an existing customer, okay. um, it, what work they've had done with us. If they're a club member, um, I take a look at the house, you know, what the square mm -hmm. footage is. And so um, if I have left a call, if I've just left a call that doesn't sell, yeah. it that thought really never crosses my mind. It doesn't bother me because we have, I have a lot of customers that come back. Okay. I sell like I would want to be sold. Okay. And um, my favorite thing about our company is that we are not a high pressure sales. Very good. And okay. so if somebody wants to speak with their spouse or if they want to have time to think about it, I'm all for that because I wouldn't make a purchase this large without my husband's decision as well. Sure. But um, follow up is where it, it becomes most important. So if the job doesn't sell, not a big deal i'll follow up on it in a couple of days okay good well we'll get into that in a little bit a little bit later um all right so as as you're doing your research do you do any like i've heard all sorts of things with doing this as long as i have uh and you listen to anything and you just pump up music or do you prefer it to silent your car do you listen to motivational stuff or or what what, what do you do in the in the in the car or the truck as you're as you're driving along I, I kind of have some music I jam out to. <laughs> <laughs> get the blood flowing a little bit. It gets my mind right. Yeah, it just yeah. It gets me in a good mood and pumped up. Yeah. Yeah, very good. Very good. Okay. All right. So you, so you did your research. You, you're pumped up a little bit. You cruise up to the house. You know, you get out quickly. You don't want to linger. You know, you walk up. You, you knock on the door. And, and you're greeted and you're, and you're welcomed into the home. So obviously, you know, the person knows why you're there because you're not, you're not a technician, you're a salesperson. They know you're a salesperson. So people typically have their guard right. up. Um, how do you initially kind of let, kind of break the ice and get people a little comfortable with you? Is there any questions you ask or, or things that you say to, to disarm them a little bit? Um, the first thing I do, I, mean, I, I go right in and I just ask how they're doing, how their day's been going, you know, just normal. Hey, how are you? Um, and then you have the customers that want to take you right to the equipment or the customers right. that kind of stand there and want you to take the lead. Sure. I always ask if they have somewhere where, somewhere where we could sit down, if we could sit down on the couch in the living room, if we could go to the kitchen table, I just have a few questions that I need to ask them. And Very I have good. my comfort survey with me when, when I go in. Very good, very good. And and do you do that? Do you take control even if you get that that type type A or, or D personality um, that wants to take you right to the equipment? Will you try and slow it down and, and sit down with them, or will you just go with them and then ask them at the equipment? I I try to get them to slow down and sit down with me, just so okay. it's more of a personable reaction versus sure. standing at the equipment all business. So sure. if I get somebody that okay, well, hey, the furnace is out here in the garage. I'll just say, hey, do you do you think we could just sit down here for a minute? I have a couple questions I need to ask you before we get started. Got it, got it. And I think a lot of people just don't know what you need to do, so they, they're probably receptive. Right. To that. I'm sure the the, the 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 ones that want to be difficult are are, are far and few between. So, um, right. do you, when you when you're talking to people and and you're asking questions, we'll get into those in a second. But do you try and and read their body language and and try and figure out their personality type so you can 
you know, know how to talk to that person or, or mirror their, you know, their type of personality? Or is that, are you pretty much you and, and you're comfortable with that? I, I consider this a pretty good trait that I have. I'm kind of a chameleon. I can really do good at, at fitting in. I'm good at reading people's body language, their their aura, um, mm-hmm. you know, when I first get there to kind of tell how they're going to be. I can tell if somebody is standoffish right away because it doesn't matter what my title is, comfort specialist. To them, I'm a salesperson, and I know that. <laughs> and so um, <laughs> so I, I do pretty good at, at just reading people right away. The thing that I like to do the most, um, Robert actually kind of makes fun of me for it because I am just, I'm so, I notice the little things. So I'm okay. like, oh my gosh, that's a pretty tree. You know, when we were training, he was like, why do you think everything is so beautiful and you're always so happy? And yeah. I kind of do that with people too. Like when I go into their home, I'll notice right away if they have a pet or if they have pictures of their kids or um, you know, fish on the wall where they like fishing, stuff like that. I'm really outdoorsy, so I can relate to all of that stuff. So okay. I just try to strike up conversation about personal things that I notice at the home that they might like. That's great. How long, How what's the longest you've, you've sat down with someone and talked nothing about it, heating and air conditioning, oh. <laughs> except for fish on the wall? That happens quite a bit for me. We Our appointments are scheduled for two and a half hours, and... Um, I'm, I'm the one that's on the, on the call the longest. I like been Uh there three, four hours. I can sit down and talk to somebody. I mean, the first hour, hour and a half of the appointment, just talking, uh, you know, about kids or about sports or about, you know, activities. Right. Right. But you can see people, I'm sure when you, when you notice people, when you come in, there's a certain like tenseness in their shoulders and their, in their body posture. And I bet after that, you know, they loosen up and all of a sudden you're not this intruder, right? You can see it in, right. in how they hold themselves. That's great. Yeah. That's great. Okay. So, so we, we've done, we're done talking about the fish in the wall and the trees in the yard. And uh, it's time to get to the comfort survey questions. Um, what, what questions on that survey do you really pay attention to the answers to, to try and understand how that, that system is going to be sold that day? Are there any ones that you're really queuing in on? I know they're all important, but any ones in particular? What it is that they do like and don't like about their current system, Mm -hmm. first and foremost. Um, The other one that I really pay attention to is if they have any airflow issues, any rooms Mm -hmm. that bother them, if they have hot or cold spots. Okay. Um, And then if anybody in the home is, has any kind of allergies or if it seems like, you know, it's kind of musty or really dusty for the IEQ questions. Sure. Um, And those are my first three and then um and then that's that's pretty much it on the beginning questions of the okay. business part of it okay now do you do you actually use the form or you just sit down and talk to them or what do you like to do um for those questions i pretty much have them down uh mm-hmm. when i go in so i do have my comfort survey with me mm-hmm. um but i don't you know sit down and flip it open like it's it's business or anything like that so sure. i'll ask those questions and then as we're headed to the equipment i take notes very Before good. I go to my next page with with what all the equipment is. Okay, so yeah, that was going to be my next question. So the questions are you, you've got those answered. Uh, so what your next step is then to go to the equipment and what do some measurements or what what do you do? I like to take the customer with me to the equipment mm-hmm. um, because a lot of people, I mean, customers don't know what HVAC equipment is. They're like, this is your expertise. You go do your thing. Yeah. But when I'm going over my presentation, they're like, well, what is this? What is this? So I like to take the customer to the equipment with me because a lot of people get confused on the air conditioner having two parts. What is a coil? I thought that was a part of my furnace. So um, when I first go out, I'll look and see if they've got an 80 or a 90 percent or furnace and I'll explain what that is. Very good. Yeah. Um, What their benefits, savings, different stuff like that is. And -hmm. then I'll let them know. Um, your air conditioner, you know, this part down here or up here, this is your coil. This is actually a part of your air conditioner and it's attached by this line set and this is how it works. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. then people, you know, see all of the equipment that they're getting and why it's important to um, say they have a downflow system. Why is it so important to change the full system? And I explain the process of having to take the furnace out, put the coil in, put the furnace back in and it saves them. 
So yeah, so you're getting them to think about, you're not just changing out a furnace today, it's a whole system change out. Right. Very good, very good. All right, so you go to the system and then, and then what else? Where, where do you go next? You used to start looking at what, air, the air returns or, or what, what, do you, what do you do next? Yeah, so I get my pictures and measurements of the equipment mm -hmm. and then um, I will ask them, it, you know, if I'm starting to get my pictures and measurements, once I've explained everything, I will ask them if their crawl space access is available. Right. So that way, while I'm getting my pictures and measurements, if they need to go clear stuff out, they can do that. Okay. Um, so take my pictures, measurements, come back inside, uh, you know, count how many vents they have, check out the returns and the sizes, and then mm -hmm. hop down in the crawl space. Okay, um, that's right. Down in the crawl space, we, we look for everything, even if it's not HVAC related. If they have a plumbing leak, you know, we want to let them know that there's another issue. Oh, wow. So, um, I check the duct work, make sure everything is sealed, get the sizes of the main lines, um, make sure the plenum doesn't have any holes or rust or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And then um, I check the insulation in the attic as well. That's great. Um, and then I let them know, okay, the, this is the process of what I'm gonna do now. I'm checking all of this stuff because I'm doing a load calculation. So do, right. is it okay if I go around the outside of your house, get the measurements of the windows? Mm -hmm. And some people will be like, well, what does the measurements of the windows have to do with anything? And I let them know. We take the height of the ceiling, the thickness of the walls. I just walk them through the whole process so they know everything that I'm doing and it makes sense right. to them. Right, right. You're, you're educating them, really, so they understand. Right. And, and I'm guessing there's probably not a whole lot of companies that, if, if they, for example, you're, you're dealing with a, a bid shopper, that there's probably not a whole lot of companies that are being as elaborate as you are in the home. No, that's that's one of the things that I mean we we're really highly recommended in our area because we go above and beyond. Right. right. Um, we've had people, we've had clients call back and they're like, "Well, I am definitely going with you because the other person didn't even ask where my crawl space was. You yeah, right. checked my ductwork. You yeah. know, it really sets us apart." Yeah. Yeah. How often have you have you gone in in the crawl space and noticed noticed a plumbing leak or noticed some kind of issue? totally unrelated to HVAC and, and, but alerted the homeowner and they were really grateful. I mean, has that happened a couple of times? It actually happens quite a bit. You know, really? we can, we'll know if they have a rodent issue. Oh, wow. um, yeah. Yeah. Plumbing issue. Um, we've, I've been in a crawl space with a snake. I came out of the crawl space very quickly and <laughs> I had a little unprofessional moment, but the customer yeah. was okay with it and laughing at yeah. me. So it was okay. Yeah. But yeah, Correct. we let them know any kind of issues that they might have down there, and people really appreciate it. Support for this podcast comes from Goodman. Goodman Manufacturing Company LP produces a complete line of refreshingly affordable air conditioning and heating equipment. All Goodman brand products are designed, engineered, and assembled in the United States. For more information, visit GoodmanMFG.com. Welcome back to the show. I'm interviewing Jamie Faria, a comfort advisor for Diamond Heating and Cooling in Garden City, Idaho, who sold over $1.57 million in her first year in HVAC residential sales. Um, so far, we've learned Jamie's background and some of her sales process, but we're going to learn a whole lot more about that in just a few minutes. Uh, we're going to learn about how she responds to customers who are surprised that a female salesperson has showed up at their door. Uh, we'll learn how her passion for Diamond helps sell customers uh, on choosing them. And she, uh, she'll share how she handles pretty much every objection imaginable and so much more. So let's jump back into my conversation with Jamie Furia of Diamond Heating and Cooling. So you take your, you know, you take your measurements. Um, do you do the calculations in front of the homeowner and sit down? Or do you kind of go just as you're standing there? Or do you go back to your truck to do any of that kind of stuff? How do you, uh, how do you position yourself? I, I come back to the car, so okay. um, I'll walk back in once I've got all my measurements and everything. I'll let them know I have all the measurements that I need. I'm going to go out in my car. I'm going to do the load calculation and write up your estimate. I'll be back in in a, just a little bit. Okay. All right. So very good. And when you're writing up your estimate, how many how many options are you building at that moment? Three, four, five. What do you what do you guys do? I try to do a good, better, best. That's okay. what we, we try to do almost always. You do okay. have that customer that's like, I want to see every single option. I want to see the 80s and the 90s. So mm -hmm. sometimes I try not to do over four because then it just gets confusing. confusing. Right, right, right. So when you're building your options, what are some things that 
typically, like you mentioned the IAQ qu question, right? So I'm sure that can get bundled mm -hmm. in. I'm sure if they have some ductwork issues, that gets bundled in. So how, I mean, how, how much is too much and too confusing when, when, building, when building options? I'm sorry, you cut out there just a little bit. Oh, sure, no worries, no worries. I was just wondering that, you know, like you had mentioned, if you give too many options, it can get it can get confusing, right? And, and people overthink stuff, and then they want to get away from you. Um, when you're looking at IAQ, when you're looking at ductwork, there's a lot of things that could get built into options. So, what are some typical things you bundle into options to, uh, you know, to help people to kind of give them an idea of, of what what they're picking that day? Um. So the ductwork, I mean, if they're, that's kind of a process of, I, I kind of get all of this figured out before I come out to write anything up. So sure. I've looked, I've checked out their ductwork. I've asked if they've had any airflow issues or anything like that. So I'll let them know, Hey, everything looks fine. Or, you know, you have this room that's struggling. It's the farthest from the furnace and the, the duct is only a six. We could upsize right. this to an eight or something like that. So yeah. I'll discuss that with them before I go out. And I'll have it as a line item. Got it. Okay. Um, the IEQ, I, I mean, I personally, personally <laughs> think that everybody should have one. They're just, they're so amazing and beneficial. Um, but if somebody is interested in it, I start with the, I put the level one, which is just the filtration um, yeah. on the quote. And I'll let them know, you know, it does have these other options. We have little um, flyers, brochures that we can take in. And so I explain to them what the difference is once I go back in with the estimate. Um, but other than that, I try not to pile too much on there. But then again, I do have those customers. They want an air ranger, a UV light, a humidifier. They want all their ducts work replaced. So sometimes the bids can get pretty big, but I do yeah. break everything down um, away from the equipment as line items so okay. they can make sense of it. Got it, got it. And hey, if they want to buy all that stuff, by all means, you can go right ahead and do that. Um, yep, <laughs> right. <laughs> so before though, you get to the the point of where you're talking about options, you sit down with them. They've, you know, you you warmed up with them. You've built trust. You've built rapport. Uh, they see how invested you are in, in in really evaluating the home. But but now we have, I'm sure, some more stuff to share with them as you sit down. So we want to talk about maybe what makes diamond diamond. What makes the, you know, you unique, um, your warranties would make them unique. Maybe talk about what's what's your your sales process or presentation like. Um, so this, uh, this uh, when I walk back into the house, um, I say this all the time and customers laugh at it every single time. I ask them if they're ready for the damages. <laughs> and so I've, everybody yeah. always laughs. I've never had yeah. it go bad. Hopefully it doesn't. Um, <laughs> But we go and sit down and I do, I tell them, okay, so I did the load calculation. I took all of the stuff that I took of the measurements and everything mm -hmm. and put into this formula that we have that tells us what size the equipment needs to be for your size of home based on our area. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And I start by going over the equipment. Okay. I get to where I'm talking about the company when we, when I get down to our guarantees and our warranties. Okay. Okay. Um, and what do you say about that? Uh, I let them know the the thing that starts off um, that conversation is we have a two year 100% money back guarantee. Okay. And I let them know that that is because we are not here to get your money and run. We are the highest rated HVAC company in the Treasure Valley. We, everybody, our service technicians and everything are very honest people. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, this is how we started. A husband and wife run the company. And we're very community involved. We actually have little flyers of all of the stuff that we do in the community. And then oh, kind of okay. like a little short autobiography of ourselves that Sue Ellen's had made for us. Oh, wow. So, about yeah, you as I, an individual person or about the company as a whole and, and the charitable stuff that you do? The little, there's, the kind two, of slips there's a front and back page. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so... One page is about diamond and community involvement, what we do, what we've done, our guarantees and what those guarantees mean. And okay. then another part that is, this is who I am. I'm a mother of four. Oh. I, you know, I love horseback riding. I'm very outdoorsy. I love taking my family boating. So just like a little autobiography about who I am. That's neat. And, so it kind of, yeah. um, that is, that's really how I get into everything about diamond. I have had people ask me, you know, um, why 
I get a lot of people who are shocked to see a female salesperson in the HVAC industry. Okay. Interesting. So I get right. asked that a lot and I'll let them know. I just absolutely love who I work for. It's, mm -hmm. we are, we are a business of taking care of people. We just so happen to do HVAC. I mean, mm -hmm. HVAC is, it's, you either love it or you hate it. You either know a lot about it or you don't know anything about it. Um, I love my company. And so learning HVAC was something that I was absolutely willing to do, put in the training for, because I'm passionate about my company. Yeah. And people love that. I mean, yeah. they're like, we can tell how good your company is because of how highly you talk about them. Yeah. And that really, I could talk about Diamond all day and how much it's changed my life. and. We're just a big family and I love it. That's great. Boy, yeah, you, I bet you just welcome that question about, oh, we don't see a lot of females in the HVAC. Well, let me tell you why. I love this. So that's yep. that's great. It just closes it closes it for you. That's great. That's really cool. Yeah. Um, I mean, right, I've so loved being here, but Robert Robert gave me my Robert gave me my chance in sales and I absolutely yeah. love it. I'm so glad that he saw whatever it was that he saw in me cuz I love coming to work every day. I love my job. That's fantastic. That's great. Um, okay, so so we talk about Diamond. We talk about yourself again. Anything else up until you 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 show the options? What, what else do you discuss at that point? Um, so I do ask them if this is something that they think they're going to be financing or paying cash for. Okay. Um, and I mean, if they're if they say, oh, we we're definitely paying cash or we're definitely going to write a check for this, or we're going to put it on our credit card. Yeah. Um, then I let them know if, you know, we have discounts for, for that. If they do want financing, I let them know we have multiple different options. We work okay. with a couple of different finance companies mm -hmm. and I tell them who our two finance companies are because a lot of people um, like to keep their financing here local and we use CapEd Credit Union, which is okay. a local company here for us. Okay. So, um, from there, you know, whatever they say, if they want financing, I'll tell them about the two companies. And then, um, if they, you know, if they want cap ed because it's your local, or if they're looking for more payment term, interest rate, stuff like that, then I'll break it down to what all of our options are. Wow. So how many options do you basically have financing wise to, to offer to someone? Um, so the, the other company that we use, um, we have about four or five different options. Um, it depends on, you know, what interest rate they want or what, yeah. the, what the term is. I mean, if they're looking for payment, then it's going to be, you know, the longer term, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. with cap ed that I let them know with that process, their loan is with the bank, not with us. Okay. So they have to do their application over the phone with the credit union and the credit union will let them know what their rate and their term is. Very good. Very good. Interesting. Okay. All right. So we've talked about, you've got the financing question before we even showed them any price. You, so you've discussed that. Any Anything else that you discussed before, uh, you know, finally laying down their options? Uh, I ask them how soon they're thinking about doing something like this. Okay. So um, that gives me you know, an idea of, oh, you know, it's, we were thinking about doing this in the fall and it's April, <laughs> you know, right. but um, so I asked them how soon they're looking at doing something like this. And then that uh, allows me to tell them, you know, hey, we are, this is our process. We're about a week booked out right now, or, you know, we've got, we're a few days booked out right now. And then I let them know it's a one day project, depending on how much they're having done. Um, our installers arrive between this time and this time in the morning, and this is what they'll be doing. You know, a lot of people ask me, well, is the power to my house going to be off? Cause I'm working from mm. home right now. Right. So I just get all of those questions answered. And I think reassuring them that we're going to make the process as simple as possible. We're not going to take up, you know, a bunch of days of your time. You're not going to have to miss a lot of work, mm -hmm. makes them more comfortable about making a decision. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do you talk to them at all at that point uh, about if they do say, oh, well, like six or eight months because they're, you know, they're, they're, they're being wishy-washy. Do you tell them about, you know, hey, this quote will only be good for a so, certain period of time and equipment prices, especially now, are, are going up and up? Is that, do you talk to them at that point about that kind of stuff? I do. So, you know, if it's six to eight months, I'll ask them why they're thinking about waiting. 
Um, if they're nervous about financing or, you know, not getting approved or something like that. Um, and I do let them know, you know, our quote is good for 30 days. Um, right now it's really, it's really helped out a lot because materials for everything are just going through the roof. So I do let them know, you know, this is the price right now, but if it's going to be six or eight months, we're going to have to revisit this estimate just so you know, you'll need to give me a call and we'll check to see if any pricing has gone up. And then I think that kind of triggers people like, oh my gosh the price might go up. Maybe we yeah. should do this now. Yeah. <laughs> right. And especially now, like the shortages of all sorts of stuff. I think people are getting more aware that it, it actually is a, a, an issue. So um, that's probably yeah. more to your advantage. Um, okay. So you talk about the, how long the quote's good for, and you, you're, you know, it gives them, you an opportunity to talk about your installation team, how awesome they are. Any, any other things you'd like to cover before uh, revealing the options? No, I just, I go into the options. I'll let them know, you know, we have, I do tell them that we have straightforward pricing. That's Mm -hmm. something that we really are proud of here at Diamond. We don't, it doesn't matter, you know, if you live in a trailer park or in a mansion, the, the size of the equipment is the price of the equipment. And we, we honor ourselves about having that straightforward pricing. So um, I'll let them know, you know, this is everything that you're getting for this price. This is what our price includes. Mm -hmm. And I go right into the pricing. Very good. Okay. All right. So you show them the pricing and then, and then you're quiet, right? And and you kind of read, you read their body language, see how, if it's, Uh if it's a couple, how they're looking at each other. Um, Hopefully they sign, but obviously they don't always sign right away. So um, what are, I'm guessing what price is the initial, the biggest uh, objection you, you get these days? Um, I actually don't get a lot of objection on pricing. A lot okay. of it, the the hardest close for me is somebody who's home without their spouse. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, uh, you know, I I need to speak with my wife about this, or I need to I I need to wait and go over this with my husband. Right. And that is where I I give them that respect. I will I will tell them that is absolutely fine. I completely understand. Sure. Um, you know, you take the time and research what you need to research, talk to your spouse or significant other. Um, and is it all right if I follow up with you in a couple of days, what is the best method of follow up? Would you like email text message? Are you okay? If I call, I'm not going to be pushy. You let me know when you want me to call. Okay. That's good. But you set an expectation. You're going to call a certain point. Um, you don't Yeah, And they really to respect put- that, that I'm not going to call every single day and, blow them up and stuff like that so sure sure but you don't try and get the spouse on the phone or on facetime or anything like that you don't you don't try you don't like to do that i don't okay i don't um i i think i try to think of it as if i was that person and i think that that would make me feel like well you're trying really hard for this and i don't want to come across as pushy at all sure sure no i definitely respect you know if if your spouse has any other questions or anything like that, you guys can give me a call and I can come back out. Okay. I will do that. Um, a lot of times I do get speaker phone, uh, okay. you know, call back, but um, I don't, I don't try to force it too much when I'm in the house. Very good. Very good. Uh, how about the people that oh, I just want to think about it? You know, I don't know. It's a lot of money. You know, they may not say it's a lot of money, but you know, that's what they're thinking in their head. And they go, oh, I just want to think about it. What do you, what do you say to those people that, that just want to think about it? I ask them if there's any kind of, you know, if I went through it too quick, if there was something they weren't understanding, mm-hmm. um, if they just want to think about it, I still ask that. I ask that question every time. Go mm-hmm. ahead and think about it. If you have any questions, give me a call, but is it okay if I follow up with you in two days? Okay. And then what, what's the best method of follow-up? Okay, very good. Um, and you, your follow-ups are always calls. I know actually some people will text because, you know, people are different these days. Um, uh, it, yeah. what, what's your preferred method of, of you just always phone call? I like to call, um, mm-hmm. but I actually do get a, a large amount of people who text me. Yeah. <laughs> um, email is Email is not, I don't, I hardly use email Um, follow-up, phone call and and text message. I do have customers that will specifically ask, please just text me. But if I can get them on the phone, I just feel like that way I can, I can, you know, almost hear their body language, you know, see what they're thinking and stuff like that. Right. So if someone calls you and goes, you know what, Jamie, I just, we love you, but I think, 
we just we're going to go with another we're just not sure or you know you call them i should say and they're not sure still or oh we're thinking about going to another company they're just a little cheaper i'm sure you've had those calls right before so what, what do you say in those instances right i ask them what i could do to earn their business okay mm-hmm and then and I'll then, ask them, you know, is it, is it equipment? Is it price? Um, I, I will do a follow-up call on myself. You know, was it something that I did? Did I not explain something? Did I forget to check something? I really want to know why. Um, and we do, I mean, most of the time, almost all, all, every call that I've not sold, it's either equipment or they just weren't able to get, they just couldn't afford it at the time. Hmm. Um, it's, not not maybe people don't want to tell me nobody's ever told me well that's because you suck <laughs> <laughs> I had that. Um, yeah. my biggest objection is usually equipment okay um, really they, will, they like a different brand or something or oh okay yeah okay that's brand. interesting very good all right um are you allowed to how much of a drop are you allowed to give on, on a price so do you have to get that and will you do that in the home where you do that only over the phone on a follow-up or how much flexibility do you have in, in discounting? Uh, I have uh, 5%. Okay. You can go up to 5%. And, um, yeah, up to 5%. But okay. I will absolutely get Robert on the phone. Hey, you know, this customer, this was there, you know, a lot of people are remodeling their homes right now, you know, refinancing, sure. fixing everything up. And we've got people who are doing the roof. And I'll call him right there in front of the customer. Hey, you know, these guys, this is what's going on. They're doing their roof. They're doing a bathroom remodel. They had in their budget $8,000 for this. Yeah. You know, what can we do? Yeah. Um, but I, I won't go over 5% without getting permission. <laughs> Got it. Very good. Very good. Okay. How, how often do you have to look at other bids? Do you try and, and put, you know, tear apart other bids and when you get the bid shoppers or does that not happen as much these days? Uh, no, that still definitely happens. Um, you have some people that are like, yeah, look at this bid. Look what they gave me. And um, then you have the other people who are like, I don't no, I don't think I should do that. So it's kind of 50-50 okay. on that. But if I can get the bid, I will absolutely, you know, jot that number down and then go over with the customer. You have, you have, you have some people that really fluff up the, the um, quotes uh -huh. and write every single thing out. Um, and I'll just let them know, you know, this, is, theirs is all wrote out like this. This is exactly what we're doing. This is right here. It's just shortened up mm -hmm. and just let them know, you know, this is, this is what you're getting from us. But right. when it comes down to, um, looking at two quotes, that's where I go in about praising my company, who okay. I work for, who works with me. Um, you know, the most important day of an ins uh, the most important day of your HVAC equipment is the day it's installed and you right. want professionals, you know, we have a journeyman on every job and we, our work looks clean. I do have a little portfolio of pictures of equipment that we've installed once it's okay. done. So if a, que yeah. if a customer has questions about that, mm -hmm. what it's going to look like, um, mm -hmm. our work is very, very clean. The installers do an amazing job. That's great. And I'm sure you tell them, hey, and I'm going to come out and look at the job, make sure you're still happy. There's that personal attention angle you can play up as well. So, yep. and we do follow good. up afterwards to make sure, you know, they were happy with the install. The installers were polite while they were there. Yeah. Um, see if they've changed their filter yet, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Very good. All right. So, someone signs with you. We talk, let's forget the negative stuff. So, someone signs with you, you know. Okay. Um, they're happy, right? But I'm sure there's always that, oh my gosh, that's a lot of money we just signed for. Uh, how do you, is there, what do you do on the way out to make them still feeling a little warm and fuzzy and not just thinking about how much money they just agreed to spend? Is there anything you do or say as you kind of exit the home? Um, so I just reassure them that, uh, they're going to be, you know, their energy savings for replacing their equipment, the comfort, you know, newer equipment is more sophisticated than the 23 year old system you have. Right. Um, I always leave my card, you know, and let them know if you have any questions before we get here, while the installers are here or after, feel free to give me a call anytime. This is my cell phone. Mm -hmm. If I have time, I'll stop by the job and check it out. 
Um, you know, see if they have any questions while I'm there and stuff like that. And then I do let them know that, uh, I'll be doing a follow-up to make sure they're satisfied with everything and see if they have any additional questions once the install is completed. That's great. That's great. Jamie, thank you so much for all your time today. I really appreciate it. I just have a couple more kind of just general, uh, wrap up type questions I like to ask. Um, I think I know the, the answer to this question, but I'll ask it anyway, cause you've, you've talked about it multiple times. Um, how much value is there working at a company like Diamond with a great reputation and, and a company that's that's really, you can tell the ownership and the management, they care about you? There's there's no cap on the value. I mean, it's just, it's, I'm, I, I, I don't, I can't even, I don't even know how to put it in <laughs> words. Um, you know, these people have believed in me from day one, which is something that, I haven't really had ever in my life, even, you know, younger or anything like that. They've all seen something in me and they gave me the confidence to, to believe in myself. Um, and I mean, I don't even know what else to say. Just it's, it's unbelievable. There, the value is, it's amazing being able to work for a place where we don't have to cold call, you know, to get people to want to work with us or anything like that. People call in already loving Diamond. Um, the community yeah. involvement that we get to participate in. Um, I will be walking through a Walmart with my work shirt on and people will flag me down. Oh, my gosh, you work at Diamond. We love Diamond. It's just oh, that's it's amazing. That's yeah, cool. it's it's amazing. That's very cool. Uh, just two more for you. Um, what is your what is your why? What what drives you to excel every day? Uh, to not be a product of my past and my family, my four beautiful children and my husband. That's amazing. That's great. That's great. Okay, Jamie. Last question for you. Thank you. This was really enjoyable. Um, if you had one piece of advice for a new salesperson, so someone like you, more than a year ago had no no background in, in HVAC sales. What what advice would you give that new person? Believe in your future and take care of the customer. Everything else will fall in place. Very good, very good. Jamie, thank you again so much for all your time. What an amazing story, super detailed with, with how you manage a call. I think that's going to be really helpful for other salespeople that are going to watch this, especially new people that are, are trying to understand what the system's all about. So thank you so very much, and I just wish you nothing but continued success uh, in the future. Thank you so much, Bob. All right, have a wonderful day. You too. That's Jamie Freya, a comfort advisor for Diamond Heating and Cooling in Garden City, Idaho, who sold over $1.57 million in 2020 on her way to becoming a crown champion. Thanks for joining us. If you feel like you have a great story worth sharing that would also help other contractors, please email me at bhouchin at yoursgi.com. Also, if you enjoyed today's show, please, if you're on YouTube, give us a like. Please subscribe. If you're on your favorite podcast player, leave us a five-star review. Here's my promise to you. Moving forward with all future episodes, we will continue to interview successful contractors and other movers and shakers in the residential contracting world. This is The Successful Contractor, powered by Success Group International. This message is brought to you by Redesign.co. As an SGI member, you can receive a 100% fully optimized website that's hosted for free. Have a website you like already? Redesign.co can dramatically boost your presence on Google free for 90 days. Redesign.co is also a full-service digital marketing agency that can assist you with all of your online needs, including PPC. Call 208-261-9898 or visit sgileads.com for more information and see how you can get a free consultation of your current website. The Successful Contractor Podcast is part of the Success Group International family. SGI is the largest member-owned best practices organization for independent residential services contractors. SGI provides its members a competitive edge through proven proprietary management tools and expertise, marketing programs, training, and group buying power, along with a highly active and eager to help membership. For more information about Success Group International, visit www.yoursgi.com.